Okay, hi peeps, welcome to uh, On the Hill, and uh, hello to the wonderful Professor McClellan. Hello, Graham. How are you? You well? I'm good. Uh, so we we'll, we we'll go straight to it. To get this is uh, we've got a couple of events this week, a few events. Firstly, this is one of two today, uh, you and me, to go into big picture stuff, uh, and then later on to dive in a particular area with the wonderful Tony in about an hour or so. Uh, but to start. So I'm going to bounce you with a quote before really you hand over everything to you. Um, today is uh, what's known as Martin Luther King Day. He was born on this day. Uh, and there's a quote, a number of quotes he's known for, but I'm just going to put this out there for you and um, for the audience. Uh, one of the many quotes, and this largely contributed to a direct belief in my belief system about where I fit in the world, if anywhere. I'm still working on that. Uh, this is his quote. Never, never be afraid to do what's right. And he said never twice to emphasize it. Never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person is at stake. He goes on to say, society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. Oh, this is wonderful. He's speaking directly here to a thing we would now call moral injury. Uh, moral injury is where one turns a blind eye, knowingly turns a blind eye to some crime, illegality or wrongdoing, and one cannot live with oneself afterwards. There's a large number of the population are suffering from moral injury as we speak. So he was way ahead of his time, as in many regards he was. So the, why, 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 is that, why is that profound to me? is because a good 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and a bit before, that I was tested on that with, am I prepared? It wasn't altruistic caring for others. It was, hang on a minute, if I don't, if I look the other way, the impact on these people is going to be life-defining for the worse. I'm not prepared to do that. It's against all my values, all my beliefs, my upbringing, everything. So I just literally leapt that way, in like literally to, to an unknown. This was predictable. I'm not doing that. I'm going that way. And, and I didn't know what would happen. But uh, my conscience is clear uh, for the better of it. And Tony will allude to this later on as to what has happened since, which I truly believe is for the greater good, rather than me be complicit to what was totally untrue and totally unjust. It would be unbearable. For me, unbearable. Couldn't do that. So it's actually a sign of weakness. But Luther King would have us believe it's a never, never be afraid. So I wasn't afraid. Did I get it right? I don't know. It's not really for me to judge. Others can judge that. But uh, um, is my conscience clear? I didn't want that wound forever on my soul. Uh, a later date when I'm trying to you know, present my house to uh, wherever I go at the end of life is uh, you know, I present myself as what I am, not something I've been a, 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 a deceit or something I've deluded myself to. So that quote leads us perfectly to largely how I met you and what has attracted me to you as a person, but also your own beliefs and your own values. And really that a lot of your professional work, which which sits comfortably with who you are as well, a lot of that is about what you were known for and continue to be known for in the world of psychology as a good human being, a good soul, is about self-responsibility. What you've achieved in the way you help people and organizations about helping them discover the beauty of taking self-responsibility, even though it's scary. There's reasons not to do it. There's every reason to do it, especially in the context of Luther King. So do you want to talk us briefly through that? What What is self-responsibility and what have you done about it? Yeah, <laughs> but what is self-responsibility? Well, I'd like to share the screen with you uh, if I can get my device to do what it should be doing. And um, let's see if that will work. Bear with me. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Okay, so this, yeah, this so far, yes, uh, all the technical things are doing as they should do. Um, here's a little cartoon I created many years ago, possibly thirty years ago, maybe even longer, um, to try and get people to understand the essence of self self responsibility, and it's a it's a self issued certificate, and the only person who can uh, issue us with self responsibility is of course ourselves. Nobody else can do it for us. We're the only person who can take self-responsibility. And this uh, cartoon character is basically saying, I'm responsible for all my thoughts, all my feelings, all my behaviors, all my beliefs, every aspect of my life. 
but it sometimes can go too far. People can take self-responsibility too far. In other words, when they when they try to take self-responsibility for things that are actually not self-responsibility, in other words, they're outside of their gift, they can cause themselves all sorts of unnecessary anxiety and, and mental health disorders. So it's appropriate to take the, the, the right level of self-responsibility, the optimum level of self-responsibility. Taking too much is, is as harmful as taking too little. So there's, a, there's an optimum level of self-responsibility right in the middle. And uh, of course, Martin Luther King was hitting the nail on the head when he was making that wonderful statement all those years ago. It's, it's interesting because I, I'm I'm aware alert to your caution. There's a swim lane here. You stay in your lane. Uh, I would say in the last ten years of my life, I major major interruptions to my vector of travel is because the two situations I became entangled. There are two defining situations I became entangled with because of the actions of others, because I was directly associated to it. I was responsible in an indirect or direct way especially in the military, I was part of the senior leadership team. I had a responsibility. And in another way where I was funding something that I then learned was totally unjust and unsafe and actually evil, and I'd been funding it, therefore I'm responsible for it. And, and in that context, I sent this recently to some very senior authorities. It's, it's like your ownership certificate. This is my, my own ownership certificate to house. Uh, it's what I believe in. I'm responsible for everything I do and everything I say. Further, I'm happy to be held to account by anyone at any time in any way because I'm responsible for everything I do and everything I say. Others can judge me. Words of wisdom. I wish uh, I wish more people shared your sense of self-responsibility. We'd have a lot fewer problems if, uh, if that was the case. Well, th th there is why I think we're, we've, we're on, uh, on the broadcast today, Nigel, is because... Whilst that all makes perfect sense to me as the, the Muppet that I am, what I've noticed in a lot of my professional work and personal work of late is there's every good reason to avoid taking self-responsibility for anything because of fear, because of uncertainty, because of uh, threat or, what, or humiliation or shame. There's every good reason to duck it and avoid it. But what I've been fascinated and inspired by you is you've actually given people who who might be feeling oh no what do i do and be consumed by fear instead of walking with fear you've actually written very powerfully easy to understand guides that help people understand and overcome fear to to make a contribution to a better society you've done that and that's really what i wanted to profile again today some of your work not all of it because there's so much, but just a bit of it that gets us all going. Thanks. Yes, this is uh, this is about um, uh, 15 of my books. I've written uh, 22 so far. Uh, but the I think the one that uh, that you're referring to that that makes most sense in this context is called the Perfect Gift. Um, it's it, it's a little um, parable. Uh, it's about 20, 22,000 words, something like that. Uh, and it tells the story um, of uh, an individual. I won't go into too much detail because it will spoil the story um, in, a, in an unusual and uh, peculiar context. And that individual is taken on a journey towards self-responsibility and uh, it is helped to understand the elements of self-responsibility. Uh, as you rightly say, Graham, it's, uh, it, it's really, really difficult for most people to take self-responsibility because what it entails is admitting that for a huge percentage of the things that have gone wrong in my life, I and I alone am responsible. And things that didn't go to plan, opportunities I missed, I and I alone am responsible. And the things that will go wrong in the future for which I am responsible, I am in anticipation of that, accepting the pain of those future uh, errors. So most people would uh, would like to blame the government, the unions, the weather, interest rates, uh, global warming, or indeed any other of the thousands of things you'll see online uh, these days where people um, blame others for... Or me. The, blame <laughs> me. <laughs> yes, right. well, if, and if, sometimes if, on a valid point as well. So wh when did you write that? I um, wrote that in 2003. Um, but the antecedents of it um, were much earlier than that. Um, I, I was working on uh, uh, the, the notions that are in this book when I was when I was a student. 
Uh, and I think uh, I, I first published something along the lines of it in a, in a book, um, if I just go back at one, uh, on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, in a book called Counselling for Managers. That was in 1998. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't go the full hog. It doesn't lay out the elements of self-responsibility in, in the way that are, are, it's laid out in, in The Perfect Gift. So, so The Perfect Gift, it's almost, you wrote it a generation ago, almost. <laughs> yeah. and, but, thanks for making me... Today, that, the important announcement today is you're about to update this. Yes, yes. It, it, it was written, as you say, a generation ago. And um, the, the, the language of that time, and, and it's only 21 years ago, you know, to me, 21 years ago, it doesn't seem that long, long ago. But as you say, it's a generation ago. <clears throat> um, the language of then um, is, is different from the language of now. And, and we do need to update it. So, yes, I'm in the process of updating it. Well, I'd make a distinction as well, in addition to that, Professor, that the person who wrote it in 2003 is somewhat different to the person in 2024. You yourself have grown as an individual in a society that continues to change, and it makes perfect sense that you would revise it and adapt it so it's more relevant and more relatable to a cha fast-changing world. Absolutely. And I'd, and I'd like to think as well that um, the writer I was in 2020, uh, 2003 uh, is not the same writer I am in 2024. I would, I would hope I could make writing improvements as well. OK, so w when I first read this and others close to me have read it as well, it, it, it's definitely people are attracted to it and often inspired to it. Part of my concern that I've, I raised to you is if you get on this this ladder of life from the victim space, as it's known, at the bottom, and you want to get up the ladder to see a bigger view on the hill, which is part of your personal development and your growth that you're ultimately responsible for or not. If you want to go up that ladder and be a better version of the person you are yesterday, this book is just the first ladder. It's not the end. Yes, it's the it's first. Awesome. And yes. Yeah. It's dangerous if you think I've got it, now I'm good to go. That's actually deluding yourself. It's not moving you forward at all. It's leaving you in a in almost the darkness there's a build on this yes what's the, uh, road then? What's the mm -hmm. next bit uh, as, as with most knowledge uh, unless the knowledge is uh, applied implemented and, and lived um it's it's relatively useless um and as a result of a conversation we had uh, last week um i'm now in the process of uh, having a companion book to this which is um and i'm not too sure in the title yet it will either be living the perfect gift uh, or implementing the perfect gift, or indeed some other verb that, uh, as the first word, that, that implies that it's one thing to have the knowledge, but actually you really do need to apply it in order to get the results um, that it could otherwise uh, not give you if you don't implement it. Uh, no, I think this is inspirational because without this, you have nothing. It's like a, a, a union. You know, it takes two parts to come together for a greater good. You know, the sum of all parts is more powerful than the individual. So I think this gap that you've identified about living it, implementing it, whichever you determine, that is a natural build. It's like uh, eating jelly babies. I've eaten one. I obviously want another one. This is the second one. Right? Exactly. And so after yeah. this, there's a third one, though. So we're getting a positive vector of travel for personal development and personal growth, which ultimately leads to owning yourself and your belief system. What's the third bit, then? Yeah, the third bit is uh, uh, a book I've, I've already written, and again, it needs to be updated. Uh, it's called I Shrink. And the notion here is that we are all our own best therapists if and only if we understand the nature of self-responsibility and we take self-responsibility. Not, not too much self-responsibility, which, as I said earlier, is dangerous and harmful, but if we take the appropriate amount of self-responsibility, we are our own best therapist. Nobody else knows what goes on inside our head and what goes on inside our emotional life and, and indeed our, our bodies as, as we do. Um, if everybody else has got a, a, a pale copy, a, a, in fact, a, a five times removed photocopy, if you like, uh, of, of what's actually going on. Um, and if, if we can understand uh, self-responsibility and we can understand what causes things to go wrong in terms of our, our inner life, our mental health, um, and we can apply those principles to, to self-healing, to, to being our own best shrink. Uh, I think we are, in fact, our own best shrink. And there's quite a lot of evidence for that, too. Um, in the psychiatric and psychological community, uh, we know that when 
a person uh, has a really good conversation with a confidant, someone they really, really trust, they, that that is just as effective as most psychotherapeutic interventions. And what does that tell us? Does that tell us that everybody on the street who has a confidant has uh, has a qualified therapist as their best friend? No, it doesn't. It, it says that uh, to be a really effective helper uh, of someone, you need to be really, really close to them, to have an exceptional quality of rapport. And of course, the person that we have the best possible rapport with is, of course, ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. So that, that's the premise no. of the book. So that's excellent. This is brilliant because effectively you're giving me and other people out there three easy to read, up to date, relevant, relatable journals that directly promote self responsibility for a greater good in society. That's what you're giving. Yep. And, and all this for the cost of a cheap bottle of wine. Absolutely. Uh, the, the first one, the perfect gift, the current version of it is available on Kindle just now. Um, it's so cheap, I can't even remember the price of it. It's just, it's just it's less than a cup of coffee in a, in a typical high street shop. Um, living, so the revised living, one will be, the revised perfect gift will be out on the streets when? Um, it, it will be available electronically uh, for the purposes of um, um, saving the environment. It, it's only going to be available electronically. Um, I think possibly within the next month it will be available, but the uh, the existing one is on is on Kindle right now. Okay, so within a month, revised version two of uh, the perfect gift, and the second one that you've yet to write, but I know you you have written in your head. Yes, living the perfect gift. When is that going to be available? That will take a bit a bit longer. Um, I, I suspect that within the next two months I should I should have that. Um, there might actually be an opportunity for me to make a start on it next week. Uh, when I say a start on it, I, I mean it's not a case of writing it per se. It's a case of typing it, getting it into the computer because it's it's already yeah. structured in in my head. Yeah, it's forty years a life experience of knowledge you're about to document for other people. And the third one, well, it's, 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 nice, it's, it's it's nice of you to say it's only forty years. That was very flattering. Thank you. <laughs> the third one, the I shrink. When's that available then? I mean, the uh, revised. Yeah, that that's that's not available currently. Um, it's uh, uh, well, when I say it's not available currently, um, it's only available to clients. So hitherto, um, I've only made it available to to psychotherapeutic uh, and and coaching clients. Um, uh, but what I'm proposing to do is uh, is make it available to people. Um, after they've bought the, uh, the the perfect gift and after they've bought um, uh, implementing or living the perfect gift. So in other words, um, I, I really don't don't want people to to get access to this one until they've got the foundations in place because I, I, I suspect um, it, it, it would be it would be read but not implemented if, if there wasn't the groundwork in place. So there's, there's true that's interesting. So you, this is absolutely not for commercial gain. This is absolutely authentic for personal development for other people to contribute to. Yes. That's that's typical you. That's you. Well, well yes. <laughs> Anyone who's ever uh, published any, any books, uh, unless you happen to publish something like um, uh, uh, Harry Potter, uh, the vast majority of people who write books, um, you, you you don't even cover the cost of the paper for writing the book. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, no, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a it's totally exercise. It's very true to your belief and your passion. That's that's what makes you very attractive as a human being to, to me. So effectively, what we're saying to people here, maybe by Valentine's Day, you can buy yourself a gift to yourself, to love yourself, understand yourself better using this revised material, especially the second one that gets you going, living it. And then really by Easter, you should be pretty much good to go to level three to level four, and you just keep going. You keep going up that hill. Don't get off it. Don't get thrown off. Don't get blown off. Don't be scared of it. Just keep going. Take the appropriate rest. Take the view in, but just keep going up. Is that about it? That just about sums it up. Yes. And the, 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 the interesting point about this is that in order for people to take self-responsibility, they need to have a small amount of self-responsibility to make that step. There's a little bit of a paradox, a, a, a kind of a catch-22 situation. One has to have enough self-responsibility to realise that uh, one needs to develop one's self-responsibility to fully develop one's self-responsibility. So a sense of self-awareness. Yes. Right. This, this is partly why we set up the Montgomery Resilience Trust, because leaders today, as we're seeing increasingly, as Tony will touch on this later today, and, and the rest of the guests over the coming weeks, Increasingly in society, there isn't anywhere near 
the appropriate levels of self-responsibility for those in, in management and leadership positions. And therefore, we're seeing and feeling hatred, division, lack of tolerance, lack of love, yeah. lack of care, and a fira society. That's And we're all part of that. So I, I kind of, yes, there's a sense of self-responsibility to this. But if you want to be a citizen in a connected world, there's a collective responsibility to this. We all have an opportunity to improve not just ourselves, but everyone we interact with. My Absolutely. view. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And there was a philosophy I, I was subjected to when I was quite young. Uh, it was this, um, when you go about your business, um, smile. Smile at somebody who, who needs a smile. Smile at somebody who's frowning, somebody who's looking miserable. Because that smile you give could be the one beam of hope that they need to keep them alive in the crisis they're currently facing. Yeah. And I think that's... Compassion available, be there. Be there. Step up. Be there. Don't yeah. run. Be there. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. Thank you, Professor. That was it. So three books okay. coming out in the coming weeks and months. Cheaper than a bottle of wine, a dodgy bottle of wine at that, that is going to fundamentally <laughs> define and improve someone's life. That's it. That's it. Easy. Okay, great. Great to see you. Take care of yourself. Bye. See you later. Well done, Professor. Take care.